What's going on? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video. I'm here with the Femi X8 Mini and I'm just gonna cut straight to the chase. I'm gonna put this up in the air, check out the image quality of the video and also uh, see how it operates and functions while in the air. I did do an unboxing and a walkthrough of the app, but I put that at the end of the video and left timestamps in the description. So you can go ahead and skip around if you wish. So the Femi X8 Mini is a direct competitor of the DJI uh, Mini 1 and Mini 2. And as far as some of the specs, the Femi X8 Mini has a 12 megapixel camera capable of shooting uh, 4K at 30 frames per second. It has a maximum bit rate of 100 megabits per second with a 1 over 2.6 inch CMOS sensor. It has a maximum flight time of 31 minutes and it weighs 258 grams with the standard battery and around 245 grams with the Pro battery. And when it comes to photos, you can shoot in JPEG and RAW format. All right, so let's go ahead and launch. All right, so we're good to go with GPS. Uh, we have uh, 17 satellites. I'm going to hit in here and check my uh, safety measures here. Um, max speed, I'm going to take that all the way up to the max. And my flight distance, uh, I'm going to leave it, let's put it at the max. My flight height is at uh, 393. Uh, I'm just going to increase that just in case. My return to home height, I'm going to reduce that down to maybe 200 feet. And uh, I believe everything else is okay. I'm going to activate the precise landing. And then everything else is okay. All right, so I'm going to go into my camera settings, make sure everything else is good there. I'm going to go with high quality, uh, video size 43, uh, 4K30. We're going to be recording this in 4K30. Uh, white balance, I'm just going to put it to sunny. Leave it at sunny. And color, I'm going to do the general color profile. And I believe I have the, put the grid lines on. And I think that's about it. Check my battery. And I'm down to 94%. And I think that's it. Other than that, uh, I'm just gonna use the uh, takeoff button to take off, test that out. And I guess we slide this over here. And there you go. All right. Now it goes up pretty high, and it's still going. <laughs> Look like it's still going. It's up there pretty high. So I'm gonna bring it down and bring it over. Yeah, it's a little breezy here today, and um, it's uh, blowing around just a little bit. But is. Let me see, yeah. It's not really holding steady too well in the wind, but it is a little breezy. And I'll put uh, the conditions on the screen here in a second. All right, so I'm gonna yaw it around. Gotta, yeah, this thing is drifting like crazy. It doesn't do too well in the wind for now. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to take it around a little bit. Start off slow. And I'll probably go into the shade because I can't see my screen. And we're going to test this horizon out. It doesn't look too straight right now. We're going to take a look at this horizon. We're going to bring up, we are at 90, sorry, we're at 150 feet. And off the bat, it doesn't look like it's straight. So I'm going to yaw it around real quickly. See if it'll straighten up a little bit. And it's a lot of latency in this thing, man. It's, uh... The signal, it seems a little uh, laggy. 
and I'm actually uh, yawing and it's like a half a second delay seems like yeah so uh, sorry for that y'all but um, it does it yeah the horizon looks a little off to me but I mean you tell me uh, I have the grid lines up and oh yeah it's off it's way off you can see it there so um, I'm going to take this out a little bit take it around and even on this screen, I can see, I know it's been a problem with the, um, there's been a problem with the uh, vignetting on the sides and I can see it clearly on this screen here. It just looks like the center of the screen is, is bright enough. Now I'm going to probably, I have to change around my settings to slow down this yaw, but I'm not going to do it just yet. And uh, maybe I also need to change the sensitivity, maybe, I don't know. But it's a lot of laggy, lagging going on in this, um, even with the uh, transmission signal, uh, the image signal. I mean, so far it flies okay. And I'm taking it around. I'm bringing it up a little higher. This is my first flight. I did uh, my calibrations. I even did a gimbal calibration. I'm probably going to go home and do another one and see uh, what's going on. And hopefully that will correct it. Maybe I need to go a little deeper and do something else. I'm not sure. Uh, but this image here, um, I mean, this is, I am looking at it through the uh, FPV and just realized that I didn't press the record button so here we go I'm gonna press the record button and now you guys probably can, uh, probably can see uh, what I'm talking about as far as the image quality I apologize for that like I said this is my first flight <laughs> and I should be used to this already but uh, you know we make mistakes so there you go I'm recording in 4k 30 frames per second this is what you get with the Fimi X8 mini and you can see the vignetting I'm not going to go over here their school is in session so I'm going to bring it back over here and I'm going to have, definitely have to reduce these uh, yaw rates, yaw speed. So I have this full throttle, uh, full forward, and we're going uh, 26, 20, you know, around 26 miles per hour, which is decent. The FPV is definitely choppy, and it is kind of dark. My EV is at zero. Now I know on the Femi X8, all you need to do is tap the screen. So I guess you got to go somewhere else and um, adjust the the EV. I'll dig more into that for the next flight. Now all the smart functions and everything, we will test that out as well in another video. Um, but uh, all the smart functions and everything. Uh, are not important to me. They may be important to other people. The tracking and all that other stuff. They're not too important to me. We're going to bring this down low and see how low I can get on the ground. Bring it right in front of me here see if, so I can see it. Yeah, definitely going to have to uh, change these rates and speeds here with the, um, the yaw and everything, but I'm not going to take the time to do it right now. <clears throat> and uh, it's saying that I am uh, less than a foot off the ground, which is not, well, actually, maybe two, three feet off the ground. Now it's catching up. 
and that, that's about accurate. So, see if I can bring it even lower. See how low I can go. And that's one thing I forgot to test, and it's pushing it back up. So, uh, it seems like the sensors are working, and I will bring it over here towards the camera to see if it's actually working. Let's bring it back here towards the camera. Put it in front of the camera. All right, should be able to see it there. So I'll put my hand underneath and see if it'll move. Okay, it is moving. So the sensors are working. It's not as snappy as the uh, DJI Mini. Fly it around just a little bit more. And then um, I think that's about it. And at the end of this video, you can go ahead and check out the, uh, the unboxing and the walkthrough of the app. I do a setup as well. So um, just in case you don't know how to, if you're new to these, uh, these drones and you don't know how to set it up, you got that there. Take it up. So what I'm going to do is just a speed test across the across the field real quick. You already saw it in normal mode. We we're going up to uh, 26 miles per hour. I'm going to switch it over to sports mode. Change this around. Switch it over to sports mode. And uh, be mindful. This it is a little windy out here, so it may not be that accurate. Nope, I don't want to do that. Cancel that. And we're going to go to sport mode. Click that on. And we're going to push full stick forward. Full stick forward. You guys watch the speed and you saw the gimbal dip right there. And also look for vibrations. Look for, you know, gimbal twitches as I'm flying forward. And I'm getting up to 25 miles per hour. I must be going against the wind because it's not changing at all. All right, so what we're gonna do is turn around and go back the opposite direction. And you see the gimbal uh, kind of twitching there. I'm not noticing any vibrations though, uh, as I'm going, like constant vibration. But then again, I, it's hard to see on the screen as well. The image is not that clear on the screen, it's like, it kind of looks like mush a little bit. So uh, just make sure I'm in sports mode because that was kind of was kind of slow. So I'm going to go full stick forward again. Full stick forward. I'm at 30%. So it's going to actually return to home soon. Now I'm up to 40 miles per hour, 41. 41.5 I think I got up to at one point. All right. So that's sports mode. So what I'm going to do is go back to normal mode and it just gave me the warning if I can get this thing out of here. Just gave me the warning. So I'm going to do a return to home. And now it's returning. Climbing up to 200 feet and then making his way back. At 26%. And I started out with 94% battery and I did not uh, time it. That's my mistake. So it's heading back and we're going to uh, see what it does. All right, it's coming down now. I'm gonna bring the gimbal down. And we're gonna see how close it gets to the landing pad. Now 
Now I have a camera, another camera in my hand, <laughs> and uh, hopefully it gets close to the pad. And it looks like it's moving around a little bit. Looks like it's picking up the pad. And I think it did. So here we go. And here's the pad. And it's just lingering there for a little bit. And let's see here. Huh? Whoa! And it landed right on the peg. <laughs> anyway. Uh, nice job. All right, guys, so that's my first flight. Uh, make sure you stay tuned for the unboxing and the walkthrough, if you wish. Um, but uh, as far as the first flight, um, I'm a little bit disappointed. Now, the Crooked uh, Horizon uh, has been an issue with Femi since, the, um, since I've had a Femi, uh, the Femi X8 SE. Uh, that's been an issue as well. Uh, but a lot of this stuff can be fixed with a uh, firmware update. Now we are in the early stages right now. Uh, this is, like I mentioned, uh, maybe a beta unit anyway. Uh, so I'm pretty sure there will be uh, firmware updates out there in the future that may or may not improve uh, these issues. However, I will be flying it more and testing out uh, the intelligent features. And also if there's any updates, uh, firmware updates, I will update you guys on it and also test it out. This did land on top of the peg of the uh, landing pad and it did survive. The propellers aren't damaged or nicked. So um, I'm glad about that because they only give us uh, two sets of extra props. So maybe with the props being a little flimsy it helped a little bit. Uh, as far as the construction of the drone, um, it is a little, uh, the plastic is not as, uh, doesn't look as durable or it doesn't feel as durable as something uh, like the uh, Mini 2. So with that said, stick around for the unboxing and the setup. All right, so here's a quick unboxing of the Femi X8 Mini uh, standard version, which weighs 258 grams. Uh, as you can see on the box, it comes with a 4K HD uh, camera, a three axis gimbal, 31 minute flight time, a kilometer transmission range and a level five wind resistance rating. So this is a very small box. So inside the box, you'll see your Femi X8 Mini, which is similar in size to the uh, DJI Mavic Mini and DJI Mini 2. When you dig further inside, you get your a quick start guide and your safety guide. Then underneath that, you have your remote, which looks similar to the Femi X8 SE remote and is expandable. You also get three data cables for your Apple and Android phones. You get a USB to USB-C charger cable. You also get two extra sets of props with screws and a screwdriver. And on the inside of the lid, you'll find a QR code, uh, which you can scan with your phone to download the Femi Mini app. All right, so your Femi Mini opens up just like any normal drone. You just fold out the, the legs. Take off the gimbal cover before you power on. And also remember there is a plastic film over the lens. You wanna go ahead and take that off. And on the bottom, you'll see the two timer flight sensors with a obstacle flow sensor. And then here is your power button. And back here is your battery. You just press this tab right here and pull. And here you'll find your SD card slot and also you'll find a switch to switch it from radio to uh, Wi-Fi. The battery is a two cell lithium ion battery. And to charge it, all you have to do is plug in the USB-C cable right here in the back. 
and then plug it into the uh, outlet. All right, so for the remote, you'll find your sticks underneath here. Just peel them out and screw them in. You have your antennas, just flip them up. Here you have your record button for video and your shutter button for taking pictures. And right here is your gimbal scroll wheel. Right here you have your power button. You press it once to see your uh, power level. You press, press and hold to turn it on. Press, press and hold to turn it off. And also here you have your return to home button. And that's pretty much it for the remote. And here is the Femi Mini in comparison to the DJI Mini 2. All right, so we're gonna do a quick setup uh, just so you can see how it is to set it up. Um, when you have a full charge on your battery, uh, go ahead and power it on and make sure you take off the gimbal cover before you do so. Uh, you don't wanna burn out the motors in the uh, gimbal. So press, press and hold the power button here. And then you'll hear a tone. Then you can go ahead and power on your remote. Press, press and hold again. You'll hear a tone there. Then you can go ahead and hook up your cable, your data cable, whatever device you have. Uh, the, you have three cables there that you can choose from. I have an Android, so I have the USB-C, the USB-C uh, data cable. And you wanna plug in the right, in, uh, right angle uh, into the uh, device, then put your device in the remote. Then at that point, you can go ahead and plug it into your remote. And it should boot up the Femi Navi app or the Mini app automatically. Enter your in your device. And when you uh, first get into the interface, uh, you'll see a pre-flight checklist, and this is where you can just, uh, you know, adjust your return home height, your fail safe. You can either hover, land, or return to home. Uh, you can see your battery aircraft, I mean, your aircraft battery level here. And then also, you'll see your SD card um, information there as well. And then if you need to go further into the menu, you can press these three dots here and it'll bring you to your main menu. And we'll go over this in a second. Starting on the left here, top left, you have your, uh, your altitude, and then you have your horizontal distance. And then next to that, the HS and the VS, which stands for horizontal speed and vertical speed. Then you have your satellite uh, information. It'll give you the number of satellites you have. And right next to that, you have your FPV transmission uh, signal. And next to that, you have your, your remote signal. And then you have your battery information there. And it gives you the uh, voltage and also the percentage. And then uh, one more thing I wanted to cover. When you tap on either one of these icons, it'll bring up the menu. If you tap on the uh, FPV uh, icon, it'll bring up the photo, uh, photo menu or the camera menu. And if you tap on the remote icon, it'll bring up the remote menu. And the same for the battery, you tap on the battery, it'll go directly to the battery information. Now to the right of all that, the far, far right corner, you'll see a little uh, sprocket here. You tap on that and it brings up the full menu, starting with the aircraft information. And go th if you go through here real quick, uh, you'll, you can adjust your uh, flight speed your flight distance, uh, you can limit your height, you can adjust your return to home height here as well. You can toggle between beginner mode and uh, regular, you know, normal mode, uh, sports mode, precise landing, aircraft indicator. I'm not sure what that is. If I toggle that on and off, I have to go through here and see what that is. Um, it also gives you the amount of mag magnetic interference that you're um, around. You can do your compass calibration here, and I advise doing a compass calibration um, when, you first, when you do your first flight, uh, even though even if it doesn't ask you to do one. Uh, you can adjust your fail-safes here too. Adjust your home point. 
You can update your dynamic uh, home point with Smart Track. You can activate that as well. You can also enable backwards flying during Smart Track. I would do that as well. And then you can uh, adjust your expo and gain, and I really don't mess with those. Moving on to the camera menu, uh, you can adjust your parameters. You either put in manual or auto. Adjust your photo size, your, your ratio. I'll leave it there. Your photo format. This takes uh, JPEG as well as uh, raw, uh, raw photos. You can adjust your white balance, color, metering mode, and also put grid lines on. I like to use a grid line, so I'm gonna actually put those on. And then also you have your SD card and you can format it here as well. And then you have your RC uh, calibration and you can adjust between, um, you can change your joystick mode, mode one, two, three, uh, mode two is most common. Um, if you are, you know, mode one or mode three user, then, uh, you know, have at it. Then you have your gimbal, uh, <clears throat> your camera or gimbal menu here. You can calibrate your gimbal. I suggest doing that as well before you go out. And then you can uh, adjust your gimbal pitch speed. I'm pretty much going to just leave it right there for now. And then you have your advanced settings in here. I'm not going to mess with that gimbal gain or anything like that. You have your battery information here. There's a two cell uh, battery, uh, I believe it's 24 milliamp, 7.2 volt battery. And then you can switch your low battery warning if you want. The lowest you can go is at 30%. And then you have your return to home battery, only enough when return to home. You can toggle these things on and off. And then down here with these three dots here, you have more choices. Uh, you can toggle off that initial check that come, pops up when you first get into the app. You can toggle that on and off if you want. I'll just leave that on because that's very helpful. Uh, you can access your flight records. You can also um, change your, your units. I have it set to Imperial. You have your maps. You can check for firmware updates. And as you can see, I have several updates I need to do. So I will do it uh, once I'm done with this. I'm not gonna go through all the updates, uh, you know, in real time. However, if you need to update everything, you just press that update button on the bottom. Then you have your maintenance mode. I'm not going to mess with that. You also can ac uh, access your flight logs in here and uh, do a drone calibration here as well, I guess. And then one good thing, you have a live feature and you can uh, broadcast live uh, through here. You just set up your account through YouTube um, and I'm not sure if you can go anywhere else. Yeah, you probably can do it for Facebook as well. You just hit that custom button and put in your uh, link there. Now going down on the right hand side, you have a toggle button here to switch between your photos and video. Then below that, you have your shutter button, of course. And right below that, if you hit that camcorder icon there, you can access the menu for uh, to switch between your video modes and photo modes. Also, uh, you can access your intelligent flight modes there too. Now with the intelligent flight modes, you have options of tap to fly, waypoints, uh, smart track, orbit, spiral. You have cinematic mode, tripod mode, course lock, fixed wing, and SAR, search and rescue. I've had the Femi X8 SE and they work pretty well on that. So we'll test this out and see uh, if these work well on the uh, mini. Then right below that, that icon, uh, tap that. This is where you access your your uh, photos and videos on your SD card or the camera. Down on the bottom right, uh, you have your EV value. And next to that, you have your gimbal pitch angle. So right now is at zero degrees. And if I move the gimbal wheel, you'll see a change. Now in the far left corner, you'll see your compass. And if you tap on that, you can change it to the map. And if you tap on the tap on the map, you can enlarge it like that. And then you have your uh, your heading, your compass there. Then you can change the layering from uh, map, hybrid, or uh, satellite view. And this icon here, uh, you tap that. It'll switch between the location of the drone um, and your home point. 
or where the remote is. And this here, you can update your home point from here as well. Then also you can access your intelligent modes down here in the right hand corner. Tap that. You can uh, access your intelligent flight modes there as well. Now to get back into the uh, app interface or the FPV uh, view, just tap on the, the map. And then to get back to the compass, you tap on the right hand corner or upper right corner of the map to get back to your compass. And then right here on the left hand side of the screen, you have your takeoff and return to home button. Right now, I'm not in the air, so uh, I don't have it up in the air. Right now it's showing uh, only for takeoff. It only gives you that option. And I'm pretty sure once it's up in the air, it'll change um, and give you an option for return to home. And we'll test all of this in the field. So that's it for the unboxing and setup. I hope you enjoyed my initial video featuring the Femi X8 Mini, and there will be more videos to come. We will be getting more into the uh, video quality of it and comparing it to a couple other drones as well. And then also we will go over the smart functions, uh, the intelligent functions, and you know just making sure that they work as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, if you found it useful, uh, please share it and also uh, give it a thumbs up. And also, if you uh, like this type of content and you want to see more uh, videos on the uh, Femi X8 Mini, uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know the next time I post a video. But until then, uh, you guys fly safe, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.